kids anymore. Welcome to USA Today. President George Bush returned from his first European trip today. The President and Mrs. Bush saluted the flag and played to the crowd after Air Force One landed at Pease Air Force Base in New Hampshire. Comics have been released from the bonds of juvenile writing and one-dimensional superheroes. They have reached such a startling new form that some prefer to call them graphic novels. And in our cover story we find they are evolving faster than you can say Shazam. When was the last time you looked at a comic book? you probably thought they were for kids. Well, take a look now, because comic books have grown up. They're just not for kids anymore, most of them. Perhaps they used to be, but now definitely they're not. Kids can still read them, but it's like, you know, the kind of stories they, they, that the writers write for them, it's like it's more for an older audience. In Europe, South America, and Japan, comic books have always been a respected literary medium. But here, comics like jazz music are one of the few truly American art forms, even though it's taken 50 years to change their juvenile stereotype. Even the term comic book is a misnomer. Whenever I write it, I never write it as two words, which would mean a humorous book. But it's one word, it's a comic book, which really means an illustrated story. The new genre is typified by more reality than fantasy. Costumed heroes now live in real cities and battle personal problems as well as villains. You can relate to the character now, whereas years ago, it, like you said, they were goody-good two-shoes, and they always come up on the right side, and they never got hurt, and their costume never got dirty. This style has drawn the newer, more mature audiences to specialty comic book shops, which have increased from less than 100 in the 70s to over 4,000 today. But will this new style bring back censorship like comics suffered through in the 50s? Comic books are an important contributing factor in many cases of juvenile delinquency. We always have to be aware that we're catering now to a very broad spectrum of readers, and we have to be very careful about what goes on each page. The art's really the first thing that attracts me to comics. Definitely the quality of the writing and the quality of the art. The combination of striking art and intelligent writing has produced hundreds of titles like The Watchman, Mouse, and the bestseller Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, in which author Frank Miller takes the caped crusader back to the roots of his original character. We've got to keep in mind that the main image people have of superheroes is, the, is Adam West playing Batman on the old TV show. That's what had to be overcome. But the idea itself is, is, is valuable, and it's also um, a hell of a lot of fun to, to write and draw. In the 50 years since Superman and Batman first appeared, heralding the age of comic books as we know them now, comics have come a long way. Retail sales have now grown to $350 million, and that's up from less than $200 million just four years ago. That's interesting. Did you have a favorite comic book? Yeah, I, not a superhero. I like the Archies. Yeah, I did. I like did the Archies, like too, but I don't know if they translate to this philosophy today. I don't know how much literary license you can take with Moose and Jughead. Jughead, I know. <laughs> Lots more to tell you about when we return. We'll have these stories. Coming up, Star Trek's William Shatner moved. One movie this summer has generated more advanced curiosity than any other. The central character began as a comic book hero in 1939. He had his own campy television series in the 60s. And now, he is a movie star. Maybe you've heard of him. Batman. But his movie career hasn't come easy. It's taken Bat producers John Peters and Peter Goober nine years to put the deal together. At least 10 different scripts were written. At one time, Bill Murray was going to play Batman when the film was crafted as a big budget comedy. But it wasn't until Warner Brothers hired 29-year-old director Tim Burton and trusted his quirky vision that the deal was set in motion and the story of Batman could be told. This one was a real tricky project. I mean, you know, you, you have a man in a bat suit and even though it's based on a comics, it was, it's a, there's a lot of exploration to try to make something like this work. Remember, your bird shall have no other wings but that of a bat. Surprisingly, the inspiration for Batman came from the words and drawings of Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci. 
At the age of 13, Batman creator Bob Kane came across Da Vinci's designs for a flying machine, and as Kane later said, there it was for me, the Batman. Lieutenant, is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? On the 50th anniversary of the comic book Batman, a motion picture is about to be released starring Jack Nicholson as the Joker and Michael Keaton as Batman. The star of this movie is truly a movie item. It really is the phantom of the opera of the 80s. The pen is truly mightier than the sword. You get the, the excitement and visual qualities from a comic book, but you also get a little bit more depth. Vicki Vale. Hi. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? The year-long production of Batman was shot in London, where producers spent millions of dollars constructing a fully functional six-block Gotham City set at Pinewood Studios. The scoring was also done in London. Producer John Peters was there to oversee the dramatic underscore of a film about his childhood hero. For me, Batman was a character. He and Elvis Presley were my two favorite characters. It's a shame he couldn't have played. Yeah, and actually, they're very similar, uh, although... Uh, um, had funny costumes yeah. that they wore. <laughs> I remember saying to the people at Warner Bros. for years, Batman, Batman, they look at me like I was a little peculiar, you know? How are you going to do a movie with a guy running with a cape and he has no superpower and he doesn't have kryptonite and he can't fly and all those different things? And then... <clears throat> ready to do this. Are they ready to go? Okay. No, but they're not ready for us. They're not ready for us. <laughs> I understand. I think it was a, this was a very difficult picture to make. It was very hard for all of us. And then, um, you know, we met Tim. And, uh, you know, uh, it just started to fall into place. One. In the early stages of the deal, one of the most frustrating roadblocks was finding the director with the right vision. Producer John Peters finally got a lucky break. On the surface, it may seem unusual that $40 million in one of the biggest movie deals of the year was entrusted to 29-year-old Tim Burton. On one hand, it's quite scary because you're, you're dealing with this money. On the other hand, it's like a bunch of kids, you know, tying capes around their neck and jumping off the roof. Tim Burton had already directed two successful Warner Brothers pictures. He had just endeared himself to studio executives when he turned the $13 million budget of Beetlejuice into an $80 million blockbuster. It was Warner Brothers who had given Burton his first break, and now they were willing to roll the dice on him as director of Batman. The only person left to convince was producer John Peters. Mark Canton, who's the president of Worldwide Production at Warner Brothers, kept talking about this young, inventive, crazy, talented kid who he was working with. And I kept saying, I want to meet him, I want to meet him. You know, it made me uncomfortable because I was always the crazy kid and I'm not the kid anymore. Would never... When they signed Burton, I think they hired his imagination and track record. What they were soon to learn about was his tremendous ability to perform under the extreme pressures of a complicated production and the presence of a multi-million dollar cast. Yeah, Batman is a huge challenge to anybody, the way, the way they chose to do it, you know. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was an enormous undertaking. I mean, the kid, you know, I mean, he's kind of known, you know, for his, like, pallor, you know what I mean? The kid is, like, known to be pale. He went past pale. He almost went to transparent, this kid. He was working so hard. I just thought every day was his last day. He couldn't, didn't think he could stand up another, to another one, and he just... But I think the thing Tim actually likes without even knowing is that he likes those frayed wires, you know. He, that's where it starts to happen, you know. And, you know, His whole look, you know, his whole hair and his whole look is, is about that. You know? Again, Michael, it, it's an, it, it, it's, what you're suggesting is an interesting thing because you don't want it to look like too... You want it to look like you're wounded, but you're, you're still going for it. Do you know what I mean? Oh. They have the light. Cut it. 
Tim Burton I would work with any day, any time he called me, any day of the, I would just, I'd start tomorrow morning on a film that he, if he had something, something to do with it, with never having read it. Because I, I came in on this rather late and um, I met him and instantly the two of us sort of took off flying together, like two bats. <laughs> now that the director was in place, the producers needed someone to fill the bat suit. Candidates included Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen, and Pierce Brosnan. TV Batman Adam West was not in the running. Very odd. This could be a plot to separate us. He was offered a cameo appearance in the film, but declined. What a terrible way to go, go. John Peters and Tim Burton pushed Warner Brothers for an unconventional choice. They believed that the perfect square-jawed Superman type lacked the twisted psychotic qualities of their Dark Knight. Batman. Unexpectedly, they found Batman in Beetlejuice. We thought, wow, wouldn't that be an interesting idea if we could have Michael Keaton play Batman? Everyone went, Michael Keaton play Batman? They wanted to throw us out of the business. People were picketing <laughs> against the picture. They were writing letters. There were people within Warner Brothers calling the chairman in New York saying, we're going to destroy the, 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 the whole thing. When the role of Batman was first proposed to Keaton, he almost immediately declined. My life is really... <laughs> Complex. Posing another threat to the deal. I think Michael was as shocked as anybody when we approached him. You know, I, I don't look like, uh, you know, the classic image of Batman. And there's nothing really that you can do. This is blah, 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 blah. And by the time you get over there, it's like he's driving away. Keaton was hesitant for three reasons. First, he had no particular interest in the comic book or TV show. Second, he wanted to take a break. And third, there was a strong possibility that Jack Nicholson would be playing the Joker. I was hesitant to blow it with Jack as he's somebody I've always wanted to work with. Probably the person I've always wanted to work with. Out of a courtesy to Tim Burton, Michael Keaton read the script. Batman's dark and driven character won him over, and he accepted the role. Again, once he got into the concept of what we were doing, uh, he got very interested in it. Stop. Stay out of the light, light, light. I think the most difficult thing in making this picture was getting the right people together at the right time uh, yeah. to be able to have everybody commit to make the movie. The final step was to find the Joker. Offering Jack Nicholson his average $11 million per picture was easy. What wasn't easy was getting him to commit. Me? Having made Witches of Eastwood with him, where he played uh, the devil, uh, um, we had talked about, you know, him playing the Joker, um, but not until did he met Tim, and then as Michael Keaton came into the picture, um, I think that Jack started to see that what Tim was assembling was a really interesting picture and an inventive picture and then we flew over to London and we spent some time over here and we showed him the Batmobile. Ah! Did he get those wonderful toys? You know, it took him a while to, 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 to own it. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. Originally, he was only supposed to work like three weeks. And then he ended up working like 91 days, I think, so. 106. 106 days, 106 days, 106 days. Yeah, I'm yeah, underpaid, yeah. I'm underpaid, the yeah. <laughs> the pen is truly mightier than the sword. It, you just get it all, you know? He's willing to push it as far as, as far as he thinks he has to push it. You know what I mean? No fear. You know, even though, you know, I mean, he would say to me sometimes, we'd walk over and say, what do you think? And I'd say, you know, I'm, I can't, he'd say, I can't tell, you know, I don't know whether there's appliance on my face and everything. And I'd say, and I'd give him an honest, you know, opinion, which was usually, it's great, what are you nuts? <laughs> you look fine. I didn't ask. In 1966, ABC aired a new TV series that became a phenomenon. Please, it's even though the TV series was 24 years old and an all-star cast was locked into the film deal, the producers always knew there was a potential problem. Ring side table, Batman. Uh, just looking, thanks. I'll stand at the bar. I shouldn't wish to attract attention. How would Bat fans compare the new Dark Avenger with the campy Cape Crusader of the 60s? I actually <laughs> loved the TV series when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, I realized when I got involved with it early on that it was, you know, we just had to do our movie because 
On one hand, you have comic book people who hate the TV series, and on the other hand, you, most people know the TV series, and they, you know, they think about the, uh, the, the theme and the pow and bang and all that sort of thing. And uh, you know, there's no way, you know, there's no way to, to, to satisfy everybody. Yes, the television series has been made. Yes, there's a comic book. I happen to be the, one of the people who didn't like the TV series because I was in love with the comic book. I love the, the Dark Avenger of the Night quality. I feel a little drunk. <laughs> and you're not anything. Hey, one drink and I'm flying. <laughs> Wing Freak terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> it's too hard of a job to just copy something. And it's... You got to give it something new and hopefully keep in with the spirit of what you think it is. So uh, I, I don't know how I would fulfill that obligation other than saying I hope that the spirit of, of why I love the image of Batman is there. Warner Brothers will soon know if the deal will pay off. And before it's over, we'll spend close to $9 million to advertise this summer blockbuster. Somebody tell me what kind of a world we live in where a man dressed up as a bat gets all of my press. At this moment, Batman with Michael Keaton is being heavily promoted. At the other extreme, Premier's next blockbuster has been kept a secret.